Excuse me, sir. Sorry, I've done my homework, but I forgot to share. Yes. I've done my homework, but I forgot to share. No, no problem. We can uh, we can have a lag time of one to two days. I understand everybody is busy. Some people do job, so I understand things. Uh, there is no pressure of submitting the homework, but please uh, do it. It is only going to take half an hour or maximum one hour daily, but this will worth it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's start with the day two of our CAPS calculation. Today we will be going through simple percentage formula. Then we will go through cross multiplication. This is also very basic, very simple. Uh, the main topics will be percentage, weight by volume, weight by volume, volume by volume, volume by weight, these kind of things. And then we will go for part per whatever. Why, why I call this part per whatever? Because this is not just part per million. This can be part, part uh, per 100, part per 1000, 1 million, zillion, trillion, whatever. So we will go for this, uh, this topic today. First of all, we will uh, we will have a look at this percentage thing. This is a very simple formula of how percentage is calculated. This is not going to come direct into any question, but we should know it. So we will see what is it. First of all, uh, let let me clarify one thing. What is going to be a solute and what is going to be a solvent? Solute. Throughout our 20 day journey, whenever I will be talking about solute and solvent, we know that when we talk about uh, something like there is a 10% solution of something, we meant that there is 10 parts of solute in 100 parts of solvent. Now, this solute and solvent, as we read it, maybe there is in our mind that we are talking about solutions. Please mute your microphones. Maybe it comes in our mind that we are talking about liquid things. But throughout our journey, 20 days journey, we may be talking about liquids. We may be talking about semi-solids. Please mute your microphones. We may be talking about semi-solids. We may be talking about solids. Where, whatever the case is, I will be talking about the word solute and solvent. Solute means that is written in the percentage or uh, if we take the beaker, we know that there are uh, there is a solvent which is abundant and then there are particles of solute. So the basic point, my, uh, my basic point here is that when I talk about solute or solvent, this may not necessarily be liquid. This can be semi-solid and this can be solid. So this, this concept is come into, coming into play in allegation method especially. And this thing is clear. Everyone. Yes. Yes. I'm... Okay. All, okay, guys, now we will talk about this percentage formula. This is very simple. The, the thing from solute will come on the upper side, this 70. I'm talking about this formula right now. This is a simple formula of percentage calculation. We, the solute comes here, then comes the solvent. Then we multiply it by 100 and answer comes in a percentage. This is a standard formula of percentage calculation. Very basic, but can be confusing at the right time. So how, how this can help us? In this equation, we are finding this X, right? In this equation, we are finding this X, but if uh, we can have X anywhere at three positions, one, two, three. If we, uh, if we are given with two values, we can find the third value. I think this is very, Basic concept, but let's uh, do it because this is the time. 
100 is equal to 58.33 percent i'm taking this 15 uh, 58.333 from here if we are given these two values and we have to find this we can find it we just need to uh, balance the equation like x is equal to and then this 120 will go up 58.33 into 120 and this 100 which is multiplying here will come in the VN. so answer is going to be 70. i do not need to use the calculator because i know the answer is 70 here so just like that if we are given with this value and this value this can be x right practice it yourself i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this but this is important sometime we need to do this in our questions part of a bigger question i think this is also clear is this clear to everybody anybody if you have if you have not understand what i'm saying you can ask the, ask the question freely I need, I, I need response from all of you guys. Open up your microphone and tell me that it's okay. You understand it. Yes, yes. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. This way, I, I feel like I'm talking to humans, right? So you can open up your microphones and respond to me. Okay, let's move forward. This uh, uh, Next, we have this weight by weight, weight by volume, volume by volume, volume by weight concept. There is only one thing to consider is uh, which is which, which, whatever the percentage that's given. For example, they say 1%. They say 1%. The, the, this means that one, uh, one part of this thing in 100 of the other thing. For example, this is weight by weight. That means the one part, one unit of this into 100 units of this that's what we can read here one gram of solid in 100 gram of product what are these units gram and ml we in all of these weight by weight weight by volume volume by volume volume by weight we will be talking about either grams or either mls these are the units here For, uh, in weight by weight this means one gram in 100 grams weight by weight one gram in 100 gram if this is weight by volume this means one gram in 100 ml whatever it is in the uh, denomination i think we call it denomination whatever it is it's 100 either gram or ml it's a volume it's ml then comes volume by volume this means one ml in 100 ml and fourth one will be volume by weight this much ml in uh, 1 ml in 100 grams. So two concepts here. One is this one is going to be 100, always 100. And what is going to be its unit gram or ml? So we will read it from our book. 1% weight by weight, 1 gram in 100 gram. 1% weight by volume, 1 gram in 100 ml. 1% volume. 1 ml in 100 ml. It's again 1% volume ml in grams. That's it here. So what if it is another percentage? What if it's 20%? Let's say 20% weight by volume. This means 20 gram in 100 ml. If it's 70% volume by volume, this means 70 ml in 100 ml. This is a very basic concept, but this is going to be used a lot in our calculations. When we move forward to uh, ahead of chapter four, we will be using this concept a lot, convergence and this percentage. This percentage is going to be almost in all the questions. Now, any confusion in this part? Everybody clear? Yes, yes, yes it's yes, clear. Yes, 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 sir. Okay, perfect. Now we have gone through the simple percentage formula. We have gone through the percentage weight by volume, etc. Now it's not in the book, but we will yes, go sir, for can you please put the previous slide. This one. Uh, no, no, for the conversion weight by volume. Okay, wait a second. Give me a second, please.
it's in the book if you want to write it down you will get it in the book it's in the second I just lecture i want to have a glancer only for one minute okay here you go but now we will talk about the cross multiplication it's also a very simple concept uh, not in the book but we will need it for a lot of time and let's clarify it for once for example we say that there are um, there are 10 gram in 100 ml and we need to find out how much are going to be in 20 ml this thing is going to be used in almost all the questions. Almost all the questions. So we need to do it right now. This is a very basic thing. So how we do it, we need to find out two things. For example, we need to find out, okay, this much gram of solute in this much solvent. We cannot write these upside down. We cannot say 10 gram in uh, 10 gram in 100 ml then how much is going to be in 20 ml? This is wrong. We cannot do this. They should be in front of each other. There is another way of doing this. C1, V1, C2, V2. But this concentration and volume thing, this does not apply to every question because we are going to be using this thing, this cross multiplication in molar mass as well, in which we will be given uh, the molecular weight and the grams or mgs of something and then we, then we need to find out okay uh, what if this molecular weight um, comes into play then how much mgs are going to be so this v1 c1 v1 doesn't make sense in all the questions and this can confuse us if anybody have any other type of cross multiplication in their mind they can continue with that but what i'm telling you is that this is the most accurate thing to do if, uh, according to me myself because this can this uh, this technique we can apply to everything in the caps uh, caps calculation so i'm i'm not going with this formula this is perfectly fine if you uh, already master this otherwise just leave it and go with this formula we cannot write uh, this at one side that one 10 gram uh, is in 100 ml then how much is in 20 ml this is the wrong way Try to learn it this way. 10 grams of something in 100 ml. Write it down uh, in front of each other. And then you can say, okay, how much is going to be in 20 ml? Now, this can be varied according to our needs. Let me show you how. A very common question is that where is this X is coming? Where this X should come? Let's clarify it. X can come at any point. We were talking about, we were talking about 10 gram of something in 100 ml and we need to find out how much are in 20 ml. So we can, we can, X can come at all of the four points. It doesn't matter. We can say that 100 ml contains 10 gram. Then 20 ml contains what? And then we will arrange arrange this equation. How we will arrange it? Uh, the x is going up. X is here now, and ten is already here. Multiply by twenty. This will come on the top, and then one hundred comes down. So this time the x comes here. X come here as well, but it won't. Uh, but if if x comes here, it's already perfectly fine. For example, we can say x amount in 20 ml and 10 grams in 100 ml. So wherever the x is, the position of x doesn't matter. You just go with your flow. Whatever situation you are in, just write it down first that, okay, 10 grams in 100 ml or you can go with 100 ml in 10 grams in 10 grams then how much is going to be in 20 ml that this need to be the same that's it i will do it once again because i think i am not expressing myself very clearly so 
so we will have all all the possibilities that comes in our mind we will have um, suppose we we are going to have um okay let's say 10 grams in 100 ml and we were uh, about to find out how much are in 20 ml how much of the solute is in 20 ml so the natural thing is either you will pick 10 gram first or 100 ml first whatever you think we will go with the both both possibilities 10 gram in 100 ml and we know this ml thing so we will write it down here 20 ml and that this is going to be the x because we are finding how much grams are in 20 ml then we will arrange this equation another possibility is that you take 100 first 100 ml in 10 grams and then 20 ml um, have which amount of solute then we will re rearrange it we will rearrange it how x is equal to x will come here 10 is here into 20 divided by 100 the things above are going uh, going down and the things there are already down are going up and uh, if we rearrange this x is going to be um, 10 into 20 into 100 same right so x can be anywhere anywhere wherever whatever your flow is just go with it i think this is also clear we are going to use it in complex a little complex way but you should be practicing this at your own this is not in the books just practice it for example just uh, imagine that if there are um, 20 grams in 750 ml then 1 gram should be in uh, what uh, in what uh, volume of the solvent so we will rearrange it x is equal to 750 into 1 divided by 20 so now we will find out that 1 gram of this medicine will be in how much volume of the solvent i think this is clear to everybody but i need confirmation is it clear yes sir. yes 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 sir. it's perfectly fine uh, you can make your own create your own uh, these equations and try it a couple of times Okay, now let's go for uh, the question here. What is the question? We will read the question very carefully and we will look at the units as well very carefully. How much aspirin is in 10 ml of a 100 ml mixture of aspirin of strength 10% weight by volume? How much aspirin is in 10 ml of a 100 ml mixture of aspirin of strength 10% weight by volume? First, we will see this part. There is 100 ml of a mixture of aspirin that is 10% weight by volume. So aspirin 10% weight by volume, uh, one, uh, 100 ml. Okay, so what's going to happen here? If we take 10 ml out of this 100 ml, the percentage is going to be the same. This is common sense. We can, we can do it. 10% weight by volume. This means there are 10 grams weight by volume in 100 ml. The concentration is same. They are they are, they are freaking here that there are 100 ml of total um, total solution. We take 10 ml. The percentage is going to be the same for 10 ml or 100 ml or 500 ml because it is going to be 10%. Anyway, how much aspirin is in 10 ml of 10% solution? So this part need to be need a skipping because percentage remains the same. But anyways, we can solve it uh, all the way, both our ways. How it solves it, 10% weight by volume is 10 gram in this. And then he says, okay, X gram in 10 ml. Okay, this is a simple cross multiplication, let's do it. He says 10 gram in 100 ml. We are, find, we are finding out how much is in 10 ml. So we will say X in 10 ml. After rearranging, we will get uh, x is equal to 10 into 10 divided by 100. This comes 1 gram. 
right? If we talk about this percentage, it is going to be the same because one by this one gram in 10 ml is also 10%, right? That's what I was talking about. This is uh, this part is unnecessary because we are not going to show our teacher that we know the calculation, right? We just need to select the answer. So if there is a part that needs skipping, you should be able to skip it. And how you will understand which part to skip by practice. A lot of questions later in CAPS is, um, are coming like this in which we have to skip some part of the question. For example, they give us temperature for nothing. So we will skip that part. So anyways, this is the solution. How the Manoj University have done it is different. It's confusing. It's different. You develop your own ways and you try to solve it your own way. We have a copy given to us by uh, by the staff in CAP Center. So don't need to no need to worry about the space. Space will be of um, space will be plenty. So this is simple. Sir, can you please repeat the solution? Once yes, again. yes, yes. How much aspirin is in 10 ml of 100% mixture, 100 ml of 10% weight by volume? So what we did is we can skip this part. If you are experienced, you are going to skip this part right away, just like me. But you can, uh, what you can do is you can say 10% weight by volume means 10 gram in 100 ml. This is the concept that we have learned. Okay, now we have only 10 minutes. Okay, we have 10 grams, 10% 10 weight by volume, 10 grams in 100 ml. Now they are asking about 10 ml. What volume is in 10 ml? If we have to find out in 100 ml, that's 10 gram. We are about to find the volume, the amount of solute in 10 ml. So we find, we place X here that how much is going to be in 10 ml. Then we rearrange the equation and the answer will come 1 gram here. 1 gram. So this is simple cross multiplication plus this weight by volume concept that we have learned. 10 grams in 100 ml from here, 10 grams in 100 ml essentially. So this is going nullified because it's already 100 ml. So we are about to find out the concentration in 10 ml. So we do the cross multiplication that how much is going to be in 10 ml. Rearranging will give us 1 gram answer. By practice, you will understand this. Okay, right now here we have a basic thing, um, not useful, but we'll see. They are asking about express 45.6% as a decimal. So let's do it. It's very simple. You need to learn some calculator tricks. No need to go into the whole detail of thing because we are not going to prove any teacher that we know how to calculate. They are just concerned about the answer. So if we type 45.6%, 45.6%. Okay, this will not give us, uh, this computer like a calculator is not giving me anything after the percentage, but if you do on scientific calculator or on your mobile phone, it will give you this answer, simple. 45.6% type it in your uh, calculator and it will give you this quest, this uh, digit. Simple, this is not usable in caps. Next we will go for, uh, what is 50% of one, 150 ml? This is useful. This is useful uh, in, uh, um, what should I do? In the sense of uh, making a shortcut out of this. Instead of doing this cross multiplication, you can use the calculator by saying, what is the question saying? What is 50% of 150 ml? This is an important thing. We should know the shortcut because time management is everything in caps, especially in paper two. How can we calculate 50% of 150 ml? On your calculators, type 150 into 50%. You need to type the whole, uh, whole solution or whatever the solid it is. You need to type it first, 150 multiply it by 50%, the answer will come 0 0.5. And this is the answer 0 0.5. So whenever you hit is equal to, this is going to give you the answer 75. Once again, I'll repeat it. Whenever you have the situation in which you have to find a percentage of one of anything of 37, for example, in this question, we have this 150. So what we will do 150, जिस उर्दू के अंदर बोलें तो हम कहेंगे 150 का 50 परसेंट कितना बनता है 
तो हम पहले लिखेंगे कि 150 सौ पचास मल्टीप्लाइड बाई फिफ्टी एंड देर इज ए साइन ऑफ परसेंट हिट इज इक्वल टू इट विल गिव यू दंसर इट्स वेरी सिंपल इवन इफ यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव का चौदह परसेंट कितना बनता है इट विल गिव यू दंसर तो यू नीड टू लर्न दिस ट्रिक राइट नाउ यू राइट इट डाउन यू टेक नोट इट्स नॉट इन बुक्स बट दिस विल दिस इज वेरी यूजफुल अगेन वन फिफ्टी का मल्टीप्लाइड परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट कितना बनता है तो इट विल गिव यू सेवेंटी फाइव स्टेट अवे विदाउट Yes, yes, that's it. That's the point. You can do it with cross multiplication. It will cost you some time. You save time. Fifty grams and hundred ml. So how much grams and hundred ml? So how much grams and hundred ml? So this way, it will be solved. Yes. X gram. It is very easy to solve when you have the whole figure. But what if you have a figure like this? Three seven eighty two point three five. Now calculate it's twenty seven percent. This is going to take time if we do it on the copy. So this is the point. You learn the trick to do it on the calculator directly okay, without writing it down. Without writing it down on the notebook, whatever percentage. We, for example, we are going to find twenty-seven percent of this, uh, this amount. So what we will do? Multiply it by twenty-seven percent. That's it. The answer will be there. You write down this answer on your notepad, not the cross multiplication. This is going to solve some time. This trick is clear to everybody. Because I am ready to teach it ten times if you don't understand it. Go yes, with the shortcuts. Clear. Go with the shortcuts. Don't go with the longer route. There is no teacher we need to uh, impress. Okay, if if anybody have any confusion, you watch this session again. Now these questions are for your uh, for your heavy lifting. You try to solve it. This is very simple. Uh, what percentage value is twenty three out of one twenty five? Okay, now this we cannot do in our head immediately, but calculator can. Calculator scientific calculator is allowed. So what we will do it one twenty five ka twenty three per what? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. This is different. This is about the formula that we have learned here. That solute, then solvent, and then multiplied with one hundred, it will give you a percentage. So this is it. Twenty three is solute, one twenty five is solvent, and then this is constant, and the answer will be here. This is eighteen point four percent is X in our case. The uh, what percentage of one fifty mg is in ten uh, is a ten mg quantity. Same, they have given us the solute, they have given us the solvent, and we are going to find this as X. Simple. Now we are at uh, last part. we have to do it quickly because we are running out of time part per million this is written here as part per million but what it can be is part of whatever this can be part of 100 part per 100 which means 1 gram in 100 ml gram and when gram and ml are going to be the constant just like the percentage weight by volume volume by volume thing part per 1000 This one gram in one hundred ml part per million means okay. One thing, we are not talking about thirty-seven grams in one hundred ml when we talk about part per one hundred. If they simply state part per one hundred, one is surely there. One gram in one hundred ml part per one thousand. One gram, one gram is here. If they don't talk about how much parts, one gram is here in one thousand ml. One part per million, one gram in one million, which is ten lakh. now i want you to learn this whenever they are giving us this part for something uh, which is going to be the part per per million most of the times this is just to give you the idea that part per million is nothing special this can be part per 100 1000 million zillion whatever it is now 
whenever they will give us this part per million, they want us to come down to percentage weight by volume. Percentage weight by volume is always in 100. They are saying one gram in 1000, uh, 1, uh, 1000 ml or 1 million ml. They will next be talking about converting this into percentage weight by volume. Whenever we have to convert it into weight by volume, volume by volume or whatever, we are talking about something in 100 ml because percent means 100. This is not percent. This is part per thousand. That's why it is. So whenever there is a percentage weight by volume, we are talking about something in 100. So we need to convert it down to 100, shrink it down to 100. This can be done in uh, the cross multiplication. That is one gram is in 1 million. Then how much is going to be in 1000? How much is going to be in 100? We can state come here like 1 million uh, contains 1 gram. Then 100 contains X. So this will give us this, this answer. Why I have written this in MGs here and gram here because this can, this should be, this one MG would be um, 0 0.001 gram, right? So I just one, two, three, I rounded it into MG so that it will be easy to read. This conversion is, should be in your head on the go. You shouldn't be doing it on your paper. This should be in your head. So not necessarily, I do not have to write it in the MG. 